The Volcker Regime Change In the 1970s the German Bundesbank focused on monetary growth as the medium and longer-term driver of nominal incomes and inflation, a position influenced both by experience of hyperinflations and by the influence of key people such as Ludwig Erhard and Helmut Schlesinger, and had adopted a specific monetary target since 1974. That said, they never embraced either monetary base control, or a k-percent rule, instead they used deviations of actual monetary growth from its target value, determined by sustainable output growth plus a feasible IT, plus an assumption about likely trends in velocity, 11 is first a trigger for analysis and thereafter a rationale for a strong countervailing adjustment in interest rates. Point one two, the Bundesbank's monetary policy during the 1970s had been an unqualified success, with CPI inflation peaking at 7.8% in the mid-1970s, compared with peaks of 12.2 and 26.9% for the United States and the UK, 13 respectively, see figures 5 to 7. Hyperinflation is defined by a threshold in the rate of increase in prices of 50% per month by one definition, 1000% per year by another. Point three five. The first two clusters of hyperinflationary episodes in the 20th century came at the ends of World War I and World War II, respectively. The third could be said to have come at the end of the Cold War and occurred in Latin America, Central Africa, and Eastern Europe. Point three six. Receiving more scholarly attention, however, have been the numerous episodes of inflation that, while quite high, did not qualify as hyperinflation. As Fisher, Sahay, and Vegg, 2002, wrote. Since 1947, hyperinflations, in market economies have been rare. Much more common have been longer inflationary processes with inflation rates above 100% per annum. Based on a sample of 133 countries, and using the 100% threshold as the basis for a definition of very high inflation episodes. We find that, I, close to 20% of countries have experienced inflation above 100% per annum. E, higher inflation tends to be more unstable. E, in high inflation countries, the relationship between the fiscal balance and seniorage is strong. IV, inflation inertia decreases as average inflation rises. V, high inflation is associated with poor macroeconomic performance. And, V, stabilizations from high inflation that rely on the exchange rate as the nominal anchor are expansionary. Dornbusch and Fisher, 1993, after the distinction between hyperinflation and high inflation, also made a distinction between high inflation episodes and moderate inflation episodes. The dividing line between moderate and high inflation is drawn at 40%. The traditional hypothesis is that monetary expansion and inflation elicit higher output and employment, provided the expansion is an acceleration from the past or a departure from expectations. In any case, at high rates of inflation this relationship breaks down, and the detrimental effects of price instability on growth dominate, perhaps via a disruption of the usefulness of price signals for the allocation of output. 37 Bruno and Easterly, 1998, found that periods during which inflation is above the 40% threshold tend to be associated with. Why do countries choose policies that lead to high inflation, given the detrimental effects? Sagnorage or the inflation tax is one explanation. Significantly lower real growth. Dynamic inconsistency, low credibility, of government pledges to follow non-inflationary rates of money growth is another. As Edwards, 1994, pointed out, the modeling approach has shifted away from starting with an exogenous rate of money growth, and instead seeks to endogenize monetary policy by means of political economy and public finance. According to Kukierman, Edwards, and Tabellini, 1992, for example, countries with polarized and unstable political structure find it hard to collect taxes, so they are more likely to have to resort to Sagnorage. Fisher, 1982, found that some countries collect Sagnorage worth 10% of total government finance. The public finance problem is worsened by the Oliveira Tansy effect, where there are lags in tax collection, disinflation reduces the real value of tax receipts. Catau and Tironas, 2005, found evidence for the inflation tax view, developing economies display a significant positive long-run effect on inflation of the fiscal deficit when it is scaled by narrow money, the inflation tax base. Easterly, Morrow, and Schmidt-Hebel, 1995, pursued the Kagan logic that high inflation arises when the needed revenue exceeds that corresponding to the Sagnorage maximizing rate of money growth. Minting rate. As stated above, the smart contract mints new NRG coins when injected green energy is consumed locally and those coins will be paid to prosumers. 
The currency is minted by the smart contract and, thus, it is decentralized and not owned by any central institution or organization. The amount of newly minted coins is such that the final income to prosumers, step 4 above, is less than 1 NRG coin per injected KWH. Thus, although consumers always pay 1 NRG coin per kilowatt-hour of green energy, prosumers receive a lower amount in order to incentivize self-consumption, and ultimately avoid wastage caused by overproduction. Common Misperceptions Economists generally agree that historical episodes of high and volatile inflation rates inevitably have fiscal roots. Building on Sargent and Wallace's, 1981, unpleasant monetarist arithmetic logic, Sargent, 1986, makes a forceful historical case for hyperinflation's fiscal roots. The association between fiscal dominance, exogenous primary surpluses in Sargent and Wallace, and rampant inflation outcomes is so ingrained that many macroeconomists also believe that regime F fiscal behavior, a weak response of surpluses to debt, necessarily produces bad economic performance. AZ. That belief is unfounded. Bad economic policies can produce bad economic outcomes in any policy regime. And regime F is no more susceptible to undesirable equilibria than any other monetary fiscal mix. Both the theoretical and the empirical results we have reviewed underscore this point. Fiscal dominance can produce explosive inflation, as Loyo, 1999, argues happened in Brazil. But explosiveness is the outgrowth of monetary behavior that is incompatible with fiscal dominance. When fiscal policy is active, ever-increasing inflation arises when the central bank aggressively raises the policy interest rate in a misguided effort to combat inflation. The active fiscal behavior transforms higher interest rates into more rapid growth in nominal government debt, higher aggregate demand, and higher inflation. Perhaps ironically, Cochrane, 2011A, Sims, 2013, and Del Negro and Sims, 2015, argue that many of the monetary anomalies in the theoretical literature arise primarily because money-only analyses trivialize the role that fiscal policy can play in delivering stable price-level behavior. Those anomalies include Obstfeld and Rogoff's, 1983, Speculative Hyperinflations and Benhabib et al.'s, 2002, Deflationary Traps. Fiscal policy can rule out both cases by adopting behavior that deviates in some fashion from typical regime M fiscal behavior. To eliminate hyperinflations, surpluses need to rise proportionately to excess inflation outside inflation's target range. BA to ensure that the economy will not get mired in a deflationary trap, fiscal policy must commit to running deficits or shrinking primary surpluses until inflation reaches its target. Both of these policy functions make fiscal choices explicitly contingent on inflation outcomes. Skeptics who question whether the economic mechanisms in Regime F have ever been observed point to instances in which government debt has grown rapidly, while inflation has been low and steady as prima facie evidence that inflation is solely a monetary phenomenon. But this criticism is akin to treating the income velocity of money as constant and finding cases where monetary expansions were not followed by higher nominal spending. Consider the U.S. experience in the aftermath of the financial crisis. Nominal government debt grew from $4.4 trillion to $10.6 trillion from December 2007 and December 2014, a growth rate of 240% that raised the debt-GDP ratio from 30.5% to 61.0%. BB Despite this massive growth in debt, U.S. consumer price inflation averaged 1.9% between 2008 and 2014. With the Federal Reserve pegging the federal funds rate near zero from December 2008 onward, monetary policy behavior appears to have been passive, as in Regime F but the theory in this chapter predicts that if the debt expansion is not associated with higher taxes, private sector wealth increases, raising aggregate demand and inflation. Where is the inflation that the fiscal theory predicts?